What's up, bikers? I'm Johnny Thompson from Fit for Racing, and today I'm going to ask you to stop running, rowing, or riding for your cardio fitness and incorporate multimodal domain training, which is going to be a game changer for bike sports athletes just like you. Watch on, I'll explain why and how to do it, and give you an example workout that I hit with the pros this morning and absolutely annihilated them. Cardio, we know it's important. We know that to increase it will make us better riders if you've been in a state, which we all have, of gasping for breath and failing to continue because you totally gassed out. Well, multimodal domain training can increase your cardio fitness as well as your ability on the bike. So it's bang for book training, and the beauty of it is it will take you no longer to do than what you're currently doing now. Cardiovascular endurance is only one area that's going to contribute to your riding ability. There are many more, like muscular endurance, strength and power, rotational strength, ability to take impact. All of these things will make you a better rider if you increase them. So why wouldn't you incorporate it into training that also increases your cardio fitness? By carefully choosing movements and performing those with the correct weight, time domain and rep ranges means that you can transition between those movements and keep a steady state heart rate in a zone, if you like, that can be very similar to steady state cardio. So like going for a run, if your goal is to keep your heart rate at say 170 beats per minute, you can do this by choosing those weights, movements, time domains, and still be increasing functional ability on your bike. It's very important that you prioritize safety first. So often you'll see, particularly in CrossFit, movements that are super heavy and they're incorporated into this cardio increasing type workout. Now the danger of that is that you're performing these movements under fatigue. So the more technical it is and the heavier it is, the more likely it is that you will fail even doing it fresh. So you don't want to be on the limit of weight because ultimately these workouts are going to be very gassy. That's the purpose of it, to increase your cardio fitness. So then if you run into something like a heavy deadlift that's quite close to your one rep max and you're going to be doing it for reps, you are inevitably going to put your spine in a compromising position. Mix up the movements so that they complement each other and they don't just add fatigue on top. So you wouldn't really want to do press-ups into ring dips, say, because that would be pressing into pressing. Your heart rate would go down, but your tricep fatigue would be the limiting factor. Do stay with movements that you're confident with in rep ranges that are achievable unbroken. What we mean by that is that you're not going to break the setup. So if it was 20, you wouldn't do two sets of 10 before moving on. It's important that you go through all of the movement in that set and then onto the next movement, onto the next, onto the next without too many breaks. So if you're pausing to get breath, your heart rate will come down and then it becomes a bit like interval training or variable heart rate training, which should be left for that purpose on other workouts. For this workout, the purpose is to have a steady heart rate across the board and do unbroken sets and little transition time to keep that variance very minimal. So to put all of that into context, here's a workout that I did this morning with the pros. Now I did say that I annihilated them, that might be a little exaggeration. They all pretty much finished around about the same time. So this workout was... 15 rounds of 250 meter row into 12 jumping alternate lunges with a twist and a 12 kilo kettlebell and then 12 push-ups. These movements were selected so that they would complement each other and the flow and the continual state of the workout is maintained throughout. Everyone finished round about 23 to 25 minutes, which if you're gonna consider a steady state cardio piece, that would be about a 5K run. But look at this workout and tell me which is going to make you a better rider. Going for a 5k run or doing this workout with this type of movement and all of the stresses that are going to replicate riding. So next time you're going to the gym or you're considering doing some steady state cardio, if you can mix it up by just incorporating two or more 
movements, thinking about changing the stimulus and the stress, and then see how much of a better rider you become when you do that consistently. Come on, two, three, three, four. four. And that's that for today. Thank you very much for watching. It's gonna really help us if you subscribe or even just like, comment below. If you try this workout, please post your times. That's always very good so that we can see that people are actually trying these workouts and finding the benefit. So that's it. Until next time, it's your time. Like Make it count. Peace.